Hey, it's Jay, and today we're gonna be reviewing a few water leak detectors made by Wasserstein. These products can be placed just about anywhere in your house where there's water. They can be placed under your sink, around the back of a washing machine, underneath the dishwasher, behind the fridge, near a bathtub. Hey, Dana? Yeah? Do you mind if we place one of these in Caleb's diaper? I wanted to see if it works. No, Jay. Come on. So. Uh -uh. All right, well, anyway, we're gonna put these to the test today. <laughs> to be honest, I've never really had a lot of luck with water in my house. When my wife and I first got married, we moved into a two bedroom, two bathroom, 900 square foot condo in Piscataway, New Jersey. And the whole thing was decorated in 80s decor. We ripped out carpets, replaced bathrooms, tile. And the one thing that kept being my nemesis in that place was water. I wanted to hook up the fridge and I had put in a water line underneath the sink um, and attached it in. And when I did that, I remember clamping down. I used one of those really cheap kits that I would never ever use again. I never recommend you using it, but I'd clamped down on the copper pipe. It just immediately started leaking. It wouldn't seal and I had to call an emergency plumber in. That leaked down through the floor. In the washing machine, I had a, a hose underneath my washing machine go. There was a pan underneath it actually, uh, which was really convenient, but that pan overflowed and then it soaked down into the floor. And then third, I installed a new shower. It was the first time I'd ever put a cement shower pan in. Uh, I had completely taken out the old plastic one. I was new to plumbing and I really didn't know what I was doing. The drain didn't seal really well and so once again, we had water leak down. And the whole thing about this was we lived on the third floor. So I apologize Brian and Sarah who live below us because they had three different instances where water leaked down on their heads. That's when I really started to, to work on home repair. But if I had had one of these, at least in two instances, this would have helped so much. This would have saved me a ton of time and money. So I'm excited to try this out. Oh, by the way, in that condo, my main water shutoff valve was completely broken. So that's the first thing I did is I went for the water main, tried to shut it off, valve broken. So water kept pouring in in all instances. We're gonna test two products today, both made by Wasserstein. Well, let's test this one first. This is not a smart device. The benefit of it is it's just a simple nine volt battery that you install. It is kind of big and bulky, but the, the good news is they send this with it as well. You can put this wire just about anywhere uh, and fit it in tight spaces and then still get the benefit of the alarm. They provide a nine volt battery, so let's get that in there. Slightly challenging to get the lid back on, but we're, I think we're gonna be okay once we put this screw in. They also give you a couple wall anchors in case you wanna mount this part on a wall. Uh, you can just put it right here. And then you can take your wire sensor and plug it in and then slide this under something and uh, everything's kind of out of the way. Okay, let's set up our smart water sensor. This one actually works with an app from the App Store, Google Play. You just have to search for W Stein or you can scan this QR code. So here's our device. Looks like this one also comes with a wire sensor. The directions recommend downloading the app first, so I just did a quick search on my iPhone and I'm clicking get now. Okay, just got an email there. Here's my code. Let's do my password real quick. We're gonna add a device. Now that we're adding our device, what we need to do is open this up. See so if to do counterclockwise and pull the top off. Notice there's a little tab here for the battery. Let's pull that out. So now we should have contact. Down here, it says press and hold for five to 10 seconds. All right, so it should flash quickly. So let me just try that again. There we go. Put it back in the lock position. We're gonna come back over here now to, let's go auto scan. All right, it's prompting me for Wi-Fi. All right, so I've got my Wi-Fi in there. Let's see if we can find it. Oh, there we go. All right, we can just leave it there, that, and we're gonna say done. 
and it looks like we're set up. This shows the life of the battery. Any notices, history. All right, we don't have any alarms yet, but we'll see how that goes. We might as well test these out first in the bathtub. Okay, at first, we're gonna test this one. I'm gonna put it face down. It basically just says, lay it on the floor. I'm gonna turn it up just a little bit. Oh, wow, they weren't kidding. So they advertise in their directions that that alarm is 120 decibels. If you've ever studied physics or anything about sound, that you know that 120 decibels is the threshold of pain, which means that if you're close enough, you can actually experience permanent damage to your ears by hearing that alarm for too long. So because that alarm was so intense, I just want to take a moment to dive into the science behind it and just talk about decibels for a moment. Compressions are where the most of the energy of the wave is, and if we take a, a look at this, we can measure the max amplitude, and the amplitude is proportional to the intensity. Intensity is simply the power or the amount of energy per time that the wave is carrying over area, which is really the distance you are from that wave. That'll judge how much energy that wave is able to carry all the way to your ear. With that said, when we really start to study sound, we realize that if you want to double the loudness of a sound, you need about 10 times the intensity. The threshold of hearing is equal to one times 10 to the minus 12th watts per meter squared. That is the absolute lowest intensity that a human can hear. If you increase the amount of decibels by 10, that means you're adhering 100 times the amount of intensity. If we're far away, if we're in another room, because the area increases, the intensity to our ears isn't as great. So this alarm has to be very loud, all right, really close to it, in order to warn us far away, because as you increase your distance from the source of the sound, your intensity decreases. If it means that your house is flooding, that's a pretty good alarm, it's gonna get your attention. We're gonna try the same alarm. We're gonna attach the sensor now to it. It's getting closer, closer. So the way this is working is they've got two little terminals here and it's an open circuit and then once water gets involved, water is a conductive solution, it actually transfers electrons from one side to the other and that's what completes the circuit and sets off the alarm. All right, next up we're gonna test the smart water sensor and it comes with a base attached. You can take this base off and it just reveals three pins. These are your conductivity pins. I'm just gonna put my phone right there in the tub because it's waterproof. And let's try this out. Ooh. So it's beeping. Do we get a notification? Oh, we did. So it's telling me exactly what water sensor is going off right now. Now that we've tested this piece here, uh, there's a base you can add to it. There's just some metal contacts in here and you just line up the metal contacts with the sensors on the bottom of this. And then on the side of this base, there's a nice uh, jack to plug in. And now you can just take this and put it up and away. There it goes, let's see. It's beeping, but it didn't immediately send a notification to my phone. I wonder if I have to acknowledge the last one first. All right, so I acknowledged it in the app, and then we're gonna try it again. There it is, I got another one, okay, good. Now the real reason I wanted to try these out is because of this fridge right here. If any moisture gets in here, it forms ice in the back. And we've already had a few meltdowns with this fridge where it kind of goes through cycles. It freezes in the back and we get these big ice chunks and then it kind of thaws out. And I think it all depends on maybe the seal of the door, how much moisture is in the air in our house. When it empties out, it empties out and water goes right on our hardwood floors. I'm gonna install this permanently back here just to kind of keep, a, keep an eye on it. But let's try to get to the bottom of this and see why this fridge might be freezing up in the first place. See these? It's just little ice crystals at the top. This has actually been a lot worse than it is right now. I followed it out not too long ago, and now it's starting to build back up again. Let's look down here. 
You can see on our hardwood floor that definitely something is leaked out and it's kind of gross. I just used like a, like I said, a Windex vinegar solution, cleaned everything in here. Got all the ice off the back. This piece of metal back here that um, where all the ice was on is what keeps the refrigerator cold and is connected into the compressor, um, which is down in the back of the fridge. If I open this and close this quite a bit, and sometimes my kids open it and close it, when I bottle up some of my home brew, I put the bottles in here and sometimes they're wet. So that moisture gets in here and it just completely condenses on that really cold metal plate in the back of the fridge. And so therefore you get ice in here. One of the tests you can do is just check the seal around because if the seal is, is broken and it's not sealing well, then you can get a lot of moisture inside your fridge. So there's a dollar bill test where you basically just take a dollar. If it comes out easy, then you know your seal is not working well. If it doesn't come out easy, then you're pretty good. So in this case, just try it in a couple spots. In this case, there's a lot of resistance, so the thing is sealing really well. So I'm just gonna rest the base up here, and I'm gonna put the sensor down underneath on this side, because this is usually where the water comes out. See, I'm about to put these bottles back in, and look, they're just covered in condensation. All that condensation, will end up freezing on the back of the fridge. So I'm just gonna wipe them down first before I put them in. After testing this product for just a day so far, I like it, I think they work pretty well. Um, they are very sensitive to moisture. So I'm uh, gonna continue to use them and I'll give you guys updates over the next few months and let you know if we have any events. If you're interested in checking the product out, there's a link in the description below. Until next time. It's bathroom near the tub. <laughs> no, Jay, you're still not doing that. Are you always watching me? It works. <laughs>